Hi guys, welcome Behind the Lens and welcome to the studio. So I've been talking about the studio for a long time. We started with our first shoot here on Saturday and we've been rolling on all cylinders since then. So uh, at it again tomorrow or to later today, I guess. Um, so our first shoot on Saturday was with uh, Bianca, a model we used um, and at the time we borrowed the studio from Savrilon. Speaking of Savrilon, <laughs> um, I shot um, I actually did a behind the scenes video of the shooting I did for his uh, marketing media. Um, and today, or actually yesterday, on Monday, Keith posted a YouTube video. Keith is a photographer in the UK. We've never actually met, but we discovered each other through social media. So we follow each other, bounce each ideas back and forth. and. Um, so he posted this video on the backstory behind his profile picture on all his website and social media and how that image was the starting point of his rebranding. So as a, kind of as a response to that, I wanted to go um, kind of a little bit in the story of how I got into photography. So that goes back a few years now. Um, my first professional photographer job, my wife would kill me if I said that because she doesn't believe it was uh, real photography. But I worked as a photographer in an amusement park and um, our goals were extremely high. Um, we had to do about 50 to 60 families, or they called them groups. It wasn't necessarily families, it was groups of friends, teenagers, whatever. And when we went to the amusement park, we had to do about 60 groups, 50, 60 groups a day. And so if you do the math, <clears throat> that is a lot of photography. That's a lot of shooting. That's a lot of different faces that you're gonna see um, all day long. And that doesn't even count the fact that um, there was a high rejection rate of <laughs> when you would try to come up to people and offer to do their portraits. Um, but once we passed to that step, um, it still was very high speed, very um, dynamic. And that experience and even the training I was given in that really kind of um, has been incorporated into how I do business and how I work even today. And we had pre we had standard settings on the camera. So it wasn't so much an experience because the standard settings that they imposed um, as far as learning the technical aspects of the camera, but um, as far as the actual um, interaction with the client, um, I, I could redo my life a thousand times. There, there's a lot of things I'd change. Um, this is not one of them because it is so crucial to how I shoot and how I interact with my clients now. The first thing was what we call the animation. And um, that is basically your interaction with your client and you're posing them and you're talking to them. Um, you are the driving force of that mini photo session. Um, we're spending five to 10 minutes with this group and we're looking to get between 60 and 100 pictures out of it. And I'm not talking about 60 files, I'm talking about 60 different types of pictures in it. So, I mean, it, it has to be very systematic. It has to be uh, automatic in your brain. And you always have to be thinking like three shots ahead on what you're gonna do. You have to be aware of the kids um, who are gonna lose patience really quickly and how to get them, keep them interested and engaged in, in the photo shoot. So that's the animation that, that carries on through the other parts. Um, the second thing was what we call the degrouping, the old beige. And that was, um, the, the concept is like when you're doing a wedding shoot, you're going to do bride with different groups of friends and family. 
it was it's pretty much that but down to an art form and it, it, it was a factory so you, if you have a family for example a standard family we're counting two adults two children so you're gonna shoot everyone together and then you're gonna shoot the kids together and you're gonna shoot the adults uh, together and then you can shoot the kids with one adult then you can shoot the kids with the other adult and then you're probably gonna try to put in like a single portrait of each of the kids and then once you're in the middle of that still having the animation in there you're also gonna bring what we called the decomposition so within each of those mini photo sessions you're doing with these broken down groups you're decomposing <clears throat> And essentially what that is, is um, changing your framing. So you're going to do close up, really tight portraits, like even, you know, just focusing on the expression of the eyes or the face, um, even like trimming off the top um, of the head and everything. Then you're going to kind of shoot a headshot. Then you're going to pull out and do like a medium portrait. And then you're going to do a wider shot where there's the background of the scenery, the lights or whatever that was behind them. And you're gonna apply that to each of the mini groups that you did. And so that's how you end up in five, 10 minutes with 60 to 100 different images of that same family. And the goal being to have as many different images to sell once they go to the stand. Now you need to have an extremely good animation because you still want them to be motivated to go and even check out the photos because we didn't charge them to do the photo session. The whole point was they would go and look at the pictures and then order prints. So um, the, this winter, uh, the guy who used to be my manager at the, at the park for the photography, um, he and I still do business together and we had these Santa Claus um, photo studios. So since we had several of these, we needed other photographers to come in and help out with uh, the shooting because we couldn't be everywhere at once. And we, we had some really good portfolios. We had some really good um, resumes even, you know, guys who have a solid um, photography concept. And some of them have their own small businesses that do it part time. And anyone that we did not work with in that, the park setting I can't say we were disappointed because it's not like, you can't expect someone that hasn't been through that to have that automatically, but it was drastic. Like people I didn't know from previous seasons that um, he had managed, I knew that they were from that park because of the way they worked. And people that hadn't been there, you could tell because it just was, kid would go up on Santa's lap, click next. And it's just like, what about the parents? What about the other kid? What about just doing the kid all by himself? Kid with his parents. And um, and again, like, you, you can't expect someone, and you can brief them ahead of time and let them know, but someone that has not been in that mindset for a full season, it just is not going to be anchored into you. They say that unless you do something 200 times, you don't have the muscle memory to do it systematically. You know, even if it's just one client coming in, I work with a lot of professionals who need um, images for their websites or their LinkedIn profiles or you know, just their social media profiles. Um, but if you're a professional, you, you, you often have a work tool, whether it's a phone, a briefcase, a a makeup brush, a camera, um, and when, when I'm shooting, I consider those um, to be subjects. I, 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 I consider the camera, the tool, to be a character in the image. If it's not a character in the image, what's it doing in the image? That That is. And so I am going to degroup my client with the tools and have different scenarios that we put um, into practice just like I would do it with the family. Decomposition aspect of it, it, again, even if it's just one person, it's the interaction with the tool, with the other characters in the image. And again, it could be the wardrobe, it could be the tools of uh, their trade, it could be um, 
It could be a vehicle that they're sitting on or that they're sitting in. Um, anything that is in the image, anything that's in the image is essentially a character in my image. And they, they kind of have this life um, of, of, of their own. And so the degrouping process that you would do with the family at a wedding shot, you do that also with your client and anything that is in the shot. Now, other than my experience, there are other things that have contributed to get me to shoot the way I shoot. And um, by no means am I anywhere close where I hope to be, where I would want to be, where I dream of being. But when I look back at where I started, um, I have come so far and in not that long. Um, and my experience is a huge part of that. And other photographers are a huge part of that. And I'm talking about the professionals who have decades of experience that you may not even know personally that are putting content out on platforms like YouTube or Facebook or their own websites or you know the photography websites and that give you the benefit of their experience and and their workflow and and I'm not talking about you know the guys that post the settings they put on their camera and then you think that oh I just copy the settings and we will take the same picture like you have no idea a lot of times what the ambient light was like with the and any of the other stuff um, I'm talking about people who work with studio lights coming from the park I had never worked with studio lights but I wanted to be working in a studio I wanted to do um, fashion and commercial portraits so I went and found the best studio lighting photographer I could find on YouTube and that's Carl Taylor and still to this day I follow as, as much as possible everything he does because not only does he have decades of experience not only do the, his images just inspire me and really kind of drive me to wanting to be able to put out that kind of content that quality of content but he also actually walks you through a shoot with each individual light telling you what he's doing why he's positioning it where he is why he's putting the modifier on and he shows you the, the different um, effect of the lights so that's for the lighting and then um Peter Hurley is, he's the headshot photographer. Um, he actually came from a modeling background and just basically applied everything from the modeling industry into his headshot business. And um, the, the information he put out was kind of like that bridge between my park experience and the studio experience because the mentality he shoots with was very much in the same alignment with the, the animation that you put in to create real emotions to get your subject. It's not, you know, you don't tell them to smile, you get them to smile. And, um, and so that was something that was repeating an experience I had, but actually putting it in words and in concepts that I could apply into the studio. And so that was extremely um, helpful and I'm extremely grateful to Peter for the content he puts out because it continues to be something that keeps challenging me and encourages me to look forward to what I can keep doing and how I can keep getting better and how, what, what I can aspire to, to be. Keith, I'm so humbled that you um, you were so inspired because it, it, if I'm shooting the way I'm shooting today, it's because other others have gone before me and put out the content and inspired me. So I know I'm nowhere near them. I'm nowhere near where I would love to be. Um, but it's um, it's it's rewarding and it's um, it's humbling to to think that despite my Humble beginnings, I was able to put content out there that inspired another creator, another artist. So, um, 
Keith, I'm looking forward to getting those God XD 300 videos out with you. Thank you for watching. Um, uh, we'll be putting a lot more content out now that we have this place. And um, until next time, we'll see you behind the lens. Take care, guys.